And we're joined on the phone today by activist, former presidential nominee, Ralph Nader. We're talking about his new book, The Ralph Nader and Family Cookbook. Mr. Nader, how are you today? Good morning, Dustin. Thank you. It's great to be speaking with you, and I'm excited about your new book here, The Ralph Nader and Family Cookbook. What are the listeners in for with this one? Well, it's more than a cookbook. It, it talks about how we grew up and the importance of food and our Arabic diet, which is often called the Mediterranean diet, has been rated by nutritionists as one of the best in the world because it's relatively low in salt, sugar, fat, uh, tremendously diverse and extremely nutritious. I mean, there's no distinction between nutrition and being delicious in this kind of food. So I have a nice introduction about how my mother got us not to whine about food. Uh, what parent would uh, not like children who simply uh, ate the food that the parents ate and spent time talking about interesting things instead of grumbling and whining about what they don't want to eat and what they can't eat. So it's more than a cookbook in that sense. But the, uh, the appetizers and soups and salads, main dishes, vegetables, breads, des uh, desserts, they're all in there, and, and they're full of ingredients. They're inexpensive to buy. They're available in the stores with very few exceptions, and the recipes are very easy to use. My mother used to joke about recipes. She used to say, uh, I like uh, use-your-own-judgment recipes. So it's, it's all around. It's affordable, it's available, and it, it can get people elevated to a new kind of uh, health-advancing diet because we all know that there are a lot of diets in this country that are very heavy in salt food and, and sugar and fat, and that contributes to obesity with all its consequences, uh, youth, youth diabetes, incipient high blood pressure. I mean, we're talking about the fast food industry that has been very reckless over the years in trying to seduce kids into just eating stuff that's sugary. My mother used to say, don't, don't let your tongue turn against your brain. A way of saying, don't just take something because it's sweet. Yeah, it's definitely a great book, and you know most people probably know you for your activism, or, you know presidential campaigns, and uh, you know all the other books you've written. But uh, the cookbook, I, I didn't um, expect to see that from you, make it onto your resume. But it definitely uh, looks great, and uh, all the uh, recipes in there look great as well. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's one of the uh, two books that I've written that everybody loves, and the other one was uh, How We Were Raised, called Seventeen Traditions. And, <laughs> I think this this book is not a, a book that divides by red state, blue state, conservative, liberal. Uh, this book uh, appeals to all people who want to connect food with delicious, uh, family-centered activity that advances health. And I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people out there, uh, you know, especially here in the Midwest, the uh, Lebanese cuisine, probably something uh, new for a lot of the listeners uh, that they've never had before. Yes, it is. But Middle East restaurants, you know, uh, when we were growing up, they were very rare. There were Italian restaurants, Chinese restaurants, but now there are Middle East restaurants spreading all over the country. I think hummus had something to do with it. <laughs> People love that as an appetizer. And uh, they're beginning to see that it's just good for them. And so it is beginning to reach in more rural areas uh, of America. And that's a good thing. I mean... The one thing that's gotten better in this country is a much more variety of ethnic food. Uh, th there's 25 Ethiopian restaurants in the greater Washington, D.C. area, and 25 years ago there wasn't any. Uh, so they all bring different kinds of ingredients, different kinds of nutrition, and that's very good for people. Definitely, and, and I love the stories you share about your parents throughout the book. You could tell that uh, your family had a real strong bond. Yeah, very much so. Uh, and it wasn't exclusive. My mother was very active in the community, and people would say, Rose, you know, you, you're raising four kids. How do you have time for the community? And she said, what's the difference? If you don't have a good community, how can you raise a good family? If you don't have a good family, how can you have a good community? So you can see where we're coming from, right, Dustin? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and my father, of course 
would always ask us some very challenging questions, like, what did you learn in school today, Ralph? Did you learn to believe or did you learn to think? <laughs> How about that one? <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, the uh, Ralph Nader and Family Cookbook is just out, and you mentioned uh, the sense of community. I wanted to ask you real quick your thoughts on what's happening today. I know you've spent a lot of your life trying to make uh, you know government corporations more accountable. How do you feel about cities, you know, like Minneapolis and others, working to uh, you know maybe abolish police departments? Do you think that uh, is something communities need? Well, they have to reform them, obviously. I think they're using the word abolish just to jar people into thinking that these demonstrations are not going to be like the earlier ones with nothing resulting in terms of change. Uh, community police should be one word. Police should come out of the community, and when you have bad police, they should be disciplined. We, everybody knows that all professions have bad apples, and uh, they've got to be disciplined and uh, it has to be demilitarized, all this military equipment that was given to police, armed vehicles, and so on. There's no place for that in American streets. And that is very expensive. So I think when they say defund the police, they're talking about cutting some of the bloated uh, bureaucracy uh, and, and not making the police handle all kinds of problems like mental health problems, etc. Those should be handled by other city departments. I just... Uh, read a report that said that 12 percent of police calls actually deal with crimes and the police should be focused on crimes not being a social service uh agency excellent thank you so much sir it's an honor speaking with you and i hope i can do it again sometime thank you spread the word it's available wherever there are bookstores and online all right will do thank you sir you're welcome and again that was ralph nader activist former presidential candidate an author, and his new book, The Ralph Nader and Family Cookbook, is available now.